We're going to talk about mitral stenosis today. So it's usually a complication of uh, rheumatic heart disease. Uh, rheumatic uh, fever can affect all the valves, but it typically affects primarily the mitral. So if you have a peristernal long axis view of the heart, you just take an ultrasound transducer and put it to the left of the sternum and look down at the heart, you'll see the left atrium, the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the aortic valve, and the right ventricle. Now, what we're talking about is stenosis of this mitral valve. Uh, normally the valve area is about uh, four to six square centimeters and you don't get stenosis until about uh, two square centimeters. The magic numbers are two 1.5 and 1.0 centimeters squared and so a valve area two to 1.5 is mild mitral stenosis 1.5 to 1 is moderate and less than 1 is severe. So if we have a valve area of 0.6 square centimeters, uh, you're going to have a low output. And, uh, and uh, uh, the first question is, is the patient in sinus rhythm? Because those patients will frequently have atrial fibrillation. OK, so these patients often have a normal cardiac output, uh, but it's relatively uh, fixed. So they might have a cardiac output of uh, say six liters a minute, but they can't increase it that well. Incidentally, we can measure this uh, valve area by pressure half time using Doppler. You can plenimeter the valve area. And there's other techniques for measuring this valve area. Now, why is pregnancy bad uh, for these patients? Uh, mainly two reasons, heart rate and blood volume. So in pregnancy, your heart rate goes from about 70 beats per minute in the non-pregnant state to about 88 beats per minute at term. And when your heart speeds up, what shortens, systole or diastole? Diastole shortens, systole is unchanged. When's blood going across this valve? During diastole. So uh, you've got less time to get uh, blood across this valve. The other thing is that you have a uh, blood volume increase in pregnancy. You have plasma volume increases about 50%. Red cell mass increases about 30%. So you have a non-parallel increase in plasma volume versus red cell mass, which causes a physiologic anemia pregnancy. So you have an increase in uh, uh, heart rate and an increase in blood volume. So you have a decreased amount of time to get an increased amount of blood across the stenotic valve. And what you do is increase your left atrial pressure to try to get that across. And as this left atrial pressure goes up, you're going to dilate the left atrium. And you can, it'll dilate so far and then it'll go into atrial fibrillation and you can get clots in left atrial appendage with AFib and embolize and have a stroke or other embolic phenomena. The other thing is there's four holes in this left atrium. And those are the pulmonary veins coming in. So when the left atrial pressure goes up, there's a passive pulmonary hypertension going back through the pulmonary circuit to the right ventricle. And so a patient who's pregnant uh, is closer to being in pulmonary edema uh, than when she's not pregnant. Now let's talk about uh, management uh, in pregnancy. One of the key things is to uh, keep the heart rate heart rate uh, less than 100 beats per minute with a beta blocker such as uh, propranolol or metoprolol and uh, give uh, Lasix or furosemide to keep them out of pulmonary edema. Now, let's talk a little bit about labor. So, you know, typically you'd, uh, you may want, if it's severe mitral stenosis, you may want to induce somebody at 39 weeks with a favorable cervix. 
and so you could have a team of people around uh, to help manage. We generally a sick patient tolerates a vaginal delivery better than a C-section. We'd section for obstetric indications such as uh, breach, uh, dystocia, non-reassuring heart rate testing, and repeat section. Otherwise, you try for a vaginal delivery. We generally uh, have a uh, lead to uh, rhythm strip, uh, so we're monitoring uh, the heart rate. Uh, we would uh, use pulse oximeter, sort of the fifth vital sign. Uh, we would uh, generally give oxygen uh, by uh, nasal cannula at uh, two or three liters a minute. Uh, we would often use uh, endocarditis, uh, consider endocarditis prophylaxis. This is a controversial area. Uh, uh, the latest American Heart Association recommendations are, are not to use it unless they've had previous endocarditis or certain lesions such as a prosthetic heart valve if they had any, any uh, shunts or any uh, prosthetic material in the heart, uh, they would recommend it. Uh, have the patient uh, labor in the lateral position, uh, left to right lateral, to decrease uh, the improved venous return to the heart. Uh, we would, key thing is an epidural, so we'd like to uh, control pain and tachycardia. Uh, you could see uh, when the heart rate goes up to 130, with the pain, the uh, pulmonary artery pressures go sky high, and you can have a flash pulmonary edema. So you want to you want to keep their pain controlled and keep them from having a tachycardia. We often uh, shorten the second stage with forceps uh, because. Uh, Pushing increases the mean intrathoracic pressure and decreases venous return to the heart. And then they have to be aware of this postpartum autotransfusion uh, so that uh, when the baby comes out, the placenta comes out, there's a autotransfusion of about 500 cc's and the patient can go into pulmonary edema in the first hour or two after delivery. Uh, when Swan Gans monitoring was done uh, by Clark and others in the 80s, 1980s, uh, they found an increase in wedge pressure of about 10 uh, postpartum, uh, 10 milliliters of mercury. And so you need to watch these patients closely and they may need uh, a dose or two of IV Lasix uh, postpartum. One thing we might discuss briefly is uh, is uh, transeptal balloon valvuloplasty. So if you have a, a, a symptomatic patient of valve area less than a square centimeter, uh, you may want to do a transeptal balloon valvuloplasty in pregnancy. And so they come up through the vena cava or in through the arm into the right atrium, and they go through the septum, across the mitral valve, and blow up an in a way balloon uh, in the and, and balloon this valve. Now you've created a uh, small ASD, it's not that big a deal. You can have uh, complications such as uh, mitral regurg, so you convert mitral stenosis to mitral regurg. You could, complications are perfing the atrium and causing a tamponade, arrhythmias, and emboli. Uh, but in general, uh, large series and experienced hands, you can do a transeptal balloon valve in plastic in pregnancy. Uh, and, uh, and have a, a big improvement in symptoms and open that valve up.